climate is very much like Ukraine. It took longer to get there, but today there's only one side of the scientific argument, which is an extraordinary thing to say. I mean, you have 195 countries that come together every year that look at the state of climate change and they all agree we've had 1.2 degrees centigrade of warming. They all agree, agree it's anthropogenic. It's being driven by man. It's not being driven by nature. It's not some cyclical thing that just happens. So first, there's only one side of the argument to be on. And secondly, every news cycle is confirming our priors. It used to be it was the Maldives, it's save the whales, it's hug the trees, stuff we just don't care that much about. We pretend to, but we don't. But now it's California and it's Louisiana and it's Italy and it's Australia. And I mean, literally every day, there's more and bigger news that's affecting us. It's confirming our priors every day. It's making us feel that it's more urgent. And so we have to respond. And so it really is the exact kind of crisis that creates the need for international response. And even if the Americans and Chinese don't trust each other, I mean, there's enormous competition happening between the US and China, but that competition is largely virtuous when you talk about climate change, because we see that the Chinese are, are putting all this money into solar and into electric vehicles and into supply chain for lithium and rare earths. And we're thinking, well, we can't let them dominate post-carbon atoms. We, we, we have to do that. So we're going to invest more in as well. So, I mean, kind of everywhere you look, there's a motivation to do a hell of a lot more. And it's not just governments. One, one of the things about this book that is particularly hopeful is that the post G0 world order is increasingly a post Westphalian world order. It's not just about governments. It's also about non-state actors as principal actors, as principal actors. And this really matters. I mean, like February 24th, everyone says the war in Ukraine started, but it didn't. It started on February 23rd because that's when the Russians engaged in cyber attacks against Ukraine. And the funny thing is the Ukrainians didn't find out about it. Microsoft did. The, the first, you know, sort of the front in the war between Russia and Ukraine, the first front was in Redmond, Washington. And, and Microsoft and SpaceX with Starlink and Google, I mean, these are literal belligerents in the war. They're actors, they're primary actors supporting Ukraine in the war against Russia. Well, when you talk about climate change, uh, the banks that are moving trillions of dollars away from fossil fuels, away from thermal coal, away from oil and gas and towards, you know, sort of ESG compliant industry, these are actors that have had a hell of a lot more impact in, in what the global outlook uh, on climate will be than any developed individual developed government. And when, when Donald Trump took the United States out of the Paris Climate Accord, it did not matter because corporate CEOs and governors and mayors and Mike Bloomberg all were getting together and saying, no, we're still gonna stick with these commitments. So actually, Mr. President, you are not the primary driver of how power will, will, will be applied when we talk about the future of global energy. All of that makes me feel that the institutional framework that we're building, not just the response on climate, but literally what the global order is gonna look like in terms of energy in 20 years time is gonna be far more functional than what we have today. That makes me very hopeful.